Ah, screw it. Let's get some light. Let's kill our Dryad. And let's take our Nightmare Shepherd out now. And we can toss our Treacherous Blessing for a 2 2 Zombie Chump Blocker. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you find any value within this video. And jump in the Discord and join one of our many community events that we're hosting. Today, we're playing an original four color enchantment deck. I'm calling it the Archon of Nightmares. It revolves around Archon of Sun's Grace and Nightmare Shepherd. This deck is a house, it produces so much value, you guys. I think you could easily get into Mythic with this if you play enough games. I know we're winning uh, games in Mythic without much struggle, and uh, it is such a sweaty meta that this performs really, really well, you guys. It shits all over Mono Red, so uh, there's a lot of that in Best of One, so you can just basically run anything with Archon of Sun's Grace, and I think you're going to do great. So we're going to take a look at the deck list, go through some strategy, get into some gameplay footage, then come full circle with some closing thoughts. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you who continue to show your attention and support to the channel. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Our deck starts off with four one drops, Alset of Life's Bounty, an enchantment creature for one one. It has lifelink. You can pay one, sacrifice it. Another target creature or enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. For our two drops, we have Starfield Mystic, a two two enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on Starfield Mystic. We have three copies of Aphmia, the Catphemy, flying 2-1. This is an legendary enchantment creature. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do create a 2-2 black zombie creature token, we have four copies of Dryad of the Elysian Grove. This is a 2-4 enchantment creature. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. We have three copies of Treacherous Blessing, an enchantment card. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Whenever you cast a spell, you lose one life. And whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Moving on to our four drops, we have four copies of Archon of Sun's Grace. This is a regular creature with three, four, flying and lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control also have lifelink. It has Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. And as long as he's on the battlefield, they will have lifelink, right, because of his static ability. We have a single copy of Spark Double. This is a 0-0. However, you may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional 1-1 counter on it if it's a creature. It enters with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. And it isn't legendary if it's permanent is legendary that it copies. We have one copy of Thassa Deep Dwelling, indestructible 6-5 legendary enchantment creature. As long as your devotion to blue is less than 5, Thassa isn't a creature. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. You can also pay 4 to tap another target creature. We have four copies of Nightmare Shepherd. This is a 4-4 enchantment creature with flying. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1 and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. We have a single copy of Rasta, the Endless Web, a 3-5 legendary enchantment creature with reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. We have four copies of Enigmatic Incarnation, an enchantment card. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrifice enchantment converted cost card. Put that card into the battlefield and then shuffle your library. We have one copy of God Eternal Alketra. This is a 3 strike creature with double strike. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 four, four black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. And whenever God Eternal Alketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into the top of its owner's library, third from the top. One copy of Tristani Discordant. Other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1. When Tristani enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white soldiers with lifelink. And at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. A uh, quick note that the 1-1 one, one lifelink will go to 2-2 two, two because of Tristani's passive ability. Yarak the Desecrated, a 3-5 with Death Touch and lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So that's really cool. We have two plains, one island, two swamp, three forests, one hollowed fountain, one godless shrine, 
two, oh, sorry, four overgrown tombs, two Temple of Maladies, one Temple Garden, one Temple of Plenty, one Breeding Pool, one Temple of Mystery, and four Fable Passages. So the land's pretty wacky, but we smooth it all over with Dryad of the Elysian Grove, right? So that's the deck list. Now let's take a look at the strategy. Our strategy here is actually pretty cool. We really want to make sure our land is fixed out of the gates. That's the most important part. So my favorite card in the draw hand is Dryad of the Elysian Grove. And that's just going to set you up for a nice smooth game plan, right? Again, we do want to get things like Enigmatic Incarnation out on turn 4, ideally. We can push it out on turn 3 if we get a Starfield Mystic in play. Starfield Mystic is another nice early setup because it makes not only our Treacherous Blessing cost less, our Enigmatic Incarnation cost less, our Dryad if we play it a turn after, but our Nightmare Shepherd and our Thassa. So these are a couple of my favorite cards to trim the cost on. Nightmare Shepherd you can get out on turn 3 for 3. This is ideal because you do turn 2 Starfield Mystic and then you hit your Shepherd on turn 3. However, I do like going in with the Dryad of the Elysian Grove if we don't have that combo available. And then once you have this set up, you should have your inc Enigmatic Incarnation on the battlefield, at which point you can sacrifice uh, anything. First off, we like to pull out an Archon of Sun's Grace. Right, so we're sacrificing our Dryad, we're sacrificing our Treacherous Blessing, right? And then we're pulling out a 4-drop. I like to get the Archon in play first, after which we pull out the Nightmare Shepherd, at which point whenever we sacrifice an enchantment creature, it will copy with our Nightmare Shepherd. The copy is still an enchantment creature, which is going to trigger our Pegasus again. But then the new creature uh, will also come out as well with the one cost uh, added to it. So, for example, if we have an Arrasta of the Endless Web on the field, a Nightmare Shepherd on the field, and a Pegasus on the field, with our Enigmatic Incarnation, we sacrifice the Arrasta. Arrasta comes back as the token. The token triggers Archon of Sun's Grace, all on the stack. And then, because we sacrifice a 4-drop, we go into the 5-drop. We grab Yarok, and now when the token comes out, it will double it, making two Archons of Sun Grace. Uh, the little Pegasus, which is really cool. So there's a lot of value hidden in the deck. If we get two Enigmatic Incarnations out, we can sacrifice each other. The first one we bring out Yarok, and the second one we bring out Archer Stondi. Stondi's going to double up because Yarok, which is really, really cool. And again, we're prone to field wipes, but we can survive them with Nightmare Shepherd and just start restacking easily as that. Uh, Aphmia is a really cool card here. It exiles all of the enchantments from our graveyard if we're not getting them with our Nightmare Shepherd from the wipes. And then we can create all those 2-2 zombies as well. Al set of Life's Bounty is really cool to throw on top of our Archon because you get the 2-2 and then you can protect it. Starfield Mystic ticks up quite easily because we're sacrificing our own enchantments. That's pretty much it, you guys. Get the Archon out, get Nightmare Shepherd out, get Enigmatic Incarnation out. Thassa is really good because we can bounce some of these other um, artifact creatures, right? Like Arasta or Dryad or Al set of Life's Bounty. Really anything we want, we can bounce with our Spark Double, or sorry, our Thassa Deep Dwelling, and that's going to re-trigger uh, our Pegasus because it's an enchantment re-entering the battlefield. So that's really cool as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this strategy. You're going to learn how to play this deck throughout watching the gameplay footage. We had a couple of really, really cool matches today. I know you guys are going to like that. A couple closing thoughts before we go. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video to a friend who you think might find some value in it, who might find it entertaining. Also, don't forget to jump in our Discord. We just rolled out phase three of our 500,000 gem giveaway. We gave out 44,000 gems yesterday, and we have 440,000 more to give out, you guys. That's no joke. Jump in our Discord. We have a flourishing community, over 300 people who'd love to greet you, right? So again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your continued attention and support. I can't thank you enough. Let's get into it. This is a pretty good hand. We are uh, up against 403, you guys. This is... This is it. Let's place that in tap. We'll play our planes next turn. Starfield Mystic. Hopefully we draw another Swamp. Right? Swamp next turn or bust. Robber. Interesting.
The Grove Master is a really nice blocker against Mono Red. We do have our Archon Sun's Grace as well when we pull our next land. Ouch. We have the Scry. Cost the land. Play our Mystic, which makes our Grove only cost one. Right, playing that. And we get to attack for three still. We're keeping our hand lower than our opponent's, so the robber's basically useless. He needs to remove the Mystics, because they're just going to get stronger and stronger. And it actually doesn't really hurt my feelings. Let's chill. All right, we're going pretty big now. Ooh, Robber of the Rich has uh, reach. We didn't think of that. We should not have made that attack. Luckily, he didn't block with an Amphiurate. If we can get our land untapped, the outside of life's bounty is going to be able to protect our Archon of Sun's Grace. Retrigger, which is really going to help us. Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Minus three won't kill us. He needs to minus four just on our Archon. No, he takes our Nightmare Shepherd. That's not a bad play either. Let's thin our deck. That's always a good idea, right? Let's send both these over there. And both of these can go this way. He should kill my Starfield Mystic. Um, we don't even need to give him protection, he'll survive. But we can anyways, because he's going to go to 3-3 when it leaves the battlefield. We're going to get the kill. Right, our opponent goes down to 9. We're up to 21. Storm's Wrath, and that's a good game, you guys. Four color enchantments, beating a top 500 Mythic player. We go first. We're going to keep it. We do have access to our Starfield, which should get our Blessing out, right? Because it'll cost one cheaper, so only having to pay two life unless we draw a non-tapped land. Mono red, figures. we pull a land, we can uh, stack another Starfield Mystic with our Treacherous Blessing, which would be cool. Of course we don't. Grab a land here. That's most important. Entering tapped here. Fable Passage comes in untapped next turn. No attacks, let's straight chill. Ooh. Is an annex. We don't like that. We can block this though. Alright. Guess the 1 1 from it.
play our incarnation. Our temple. No attacks here. Sacking our treacherous blessing. Playing out our phoenix. I call it a phoenix, but it's a pegasus. Archon of Sun's Grace. Mystic ticks up. 16 life still. Oh my god, nice. Let's just trade. Right. It sucks, but it is what it is. So he gets two 1-1s. One -ones. That we, uh, we definitely need to deal with. Let's play our Mystic. Yeah, let's play our Grove Master. Make the token. Keep playing. We should probably gain our life here. Actually, no, it makes a good blocker for the 1-1. One -one. Ah, screw it. Let's get some life. Let's kill our Dryad. And let's take our Nightmare Shepherd out now. And we can toss our Treacherous Blessing for a 2 2 zombie chump blocker. Good game, you guys. That's the combo. I don't think we have even much more basic land in our library than this. That's quite interesting. Let's get that turn one out, though. Nothing for turn two. Feels bad. Turn three is really nice, and turn four is quite nice as well. Let's take the scry here since we've got nothing going on. Oh goodness. Let's toss it. It's not part of our main combo, so we don't need it, even though it's nice low mana cost. Get that damage in, boy. All right, he's going slow as well. It's actually beneficial for us. I'm gonna hold this in my hand and play it with our Archon of Sun's Grace next turn. Right, just so we're getting that 2-2 off of it. We sack it to thin our library. Going out of swamp. If he quenches this, I'm gonna cry. He must have the option to do it. Really. Interesting. Maybe we should have left that single mana up to protect it with our other L set of life's bounty. What's he do? Just bounce it? Yeah, okay. Ah, could be worse. We definitely should have kept that mana up to protect it, though. Could be worse. Storm's Wrath. Minus four, minus four to everything sucks. Okay, of Wishes. Right to his sideboard. Interesting. That's what he takes. Let's get our Nightmare Shepherd out at least. Four more damage and down to 11. He wipes us. We get three creatures back. It is a sorcery spell. He has to cast it. There's no way he takes damage another turn. As long as we can pull enchantments, 
after, we're going to be okay. Nightmare Shepherd does really upset play for him. Right? He doesn't want to wipe it. It's similar to Annex, where it protects you from field wipes, in a way. Obviously, I like Annex a little bit more. Um, but with Annex, you don't get to keep abilities. With Nightmare Shepherd, you do get to keep abilities. Which is cool. So he's really uh, thinking this one through, right? I'm good on him. You should uh, think about your decisions. Let's resolve this. Right, take action. Take action, take action. And normally we would like our Sark, our, our Sarkon, our Archon of Sun's Grace on the field. Because when all these enchantments enter the battlefield, it would re-trigger it. Let's take something that not only shuts down his flyers, but survives his wipes. Lucky Clover for a Brazen Borer wipe, or bounce, does suck. We can sacrifice one of our life's bounty. Okay, he's double sideboarding. Do we get two spiders? We should. I guess a copy is not a cast, though, right? Fay of Wishes and Best of One, you guys. My favorite card. Ever since it came out, it was just like, this card in Best of One is, is fire. Mastermind's Acquisition is what we had previously. He takes a great henge. Interesting. He really wants to go long here. And Anissa. Wow. All attacking here. I think it's pretty good damage. Down to two. I'm not sure I want to sack him. Screw it. Let's go for it. Octo survives. Pretty good. But Tristani makes all the tokens. Let's take our Yara. Just because it has a 5 toughness, so it can survive as well. Probably should have left it. And then we could have created the one twos with it. It's his go, right? I don't think he has it. He needs to both play a creature and play Storm's Wrath. So we're talking Fae of Wishes after his Storm's Wrath. Goes in with a Nyssa. There's four land available, um, which when combined with Nyssa, it's going to equal a lot more. Sorry, three available. The one, two, three, four, five, six total. That's pretty gross, let's be honest. He does need something with flying to hit the battlefield. He needs to 100% play. Uh, his fave wishes. No ifs, ands, or buts. We can also just go wide, right? So we need to see Storm's Wrath here. He doesn't have two sources of red available, though. So that's going to be the downfall here. We could see 
A couple of bone crusher. Okay. Interesting. This is some value here. Again, just clicking up our Starfield Mystic, which is good for us. Everything has a trigger. Synergy, 5 out of 5. Down to 2. We're at 29. We've really not even um, tried too hard, and we're uh, taking control of this top meta deck match. Some original jank, boys. Loving it. Easy peasy. All right, so that is Archon of Nightmares, our original jank mythic deck. I think it performed pretty well. Obviously, we have a couple more adjustments we can make in the future, but I'm really happy with how it's performing so far. It's not every day that I get to make a original deck that is actually able to compete with top mythic deck, you guys. Uh, but that's really, really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give this video a like and a comment. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not done so yet. We're also live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST, so pretty early. But again, if you're in Australia, that's going to be your evening, and then in Europe, your afternoon. So it's only in the West you're going to have to get out of bed to hear me. Um, but again, just come enjoy your mornings, your afternoons, your evenings with us, whatever time it is. We're happy to have you. We are uh, always looking to expand and grow our audience. Again, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and have a great day. If you liked today's video, be sure to check out some of our other content. We built playlists for our guides for beginners, and then we also have our greatest hits, which is a collection of our most popular videos. You can also subscribe if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. So do that, tap that like button, send this out to a friend who you think might be interested in it as well, and have a great day.